Welcome to the Academic Writing Amplified podcast. On this podcast, we believe that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women and non-binary people are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. With our team of experienced writing coaches as co-hosts, we'll share insights and talk to inspiring guests to bring you the practical strategies, systems, and mindset shifts you need to find time to write, publish work you love, and design your career on your terms. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Hey there, it's Kathy Mazek from Scholar's Voice. And today I'm coming to you to talk about two writing practice extremes and why they don't work. Now, you're going to hear a lot about these writing practices that sound very appealing. And it's actually like very common to get this kind of writing practice advice. And the two extremes I will just reveal from the beginning, the two extremes are to write every day, that, that your practice, your writing practice should be one where you write every day. And the other one is something I talk about a lot here, which is binge writing. So let's dig into these two very common but extreme writing practices and why they don't work. So let's hit the most common one first, the write every day quote unquote method. And I'm putting the method part in air quotes because actually <laughs> the promise to yourself or the commitment or whatever to write every day is actually not a writing practice. And I'm going to tell you why it, it really doesn't a timer plus a commitment to write every day does not a writing practice make. And that's because it is not resilient. <laughs> it is not something that if you stop, you can easily start again without the guilt, without the overthinking, without the sensation that you have failed. And so it is not at all about developing a deep and positive relationship with your writing. It is just about frequency and it's just about commitment. And it's not that frequency and commitment like aren't important. It's that those two things are not enough to make a writing practice for academics. So let me say that the write every day advice comes from the world of creative writing. It does not come from the world of scholarly writing necessarily, right? So when you're a creative writer, like absolutely writing every day, journaling, getting words on the page. That is how you're exploring your ideas and developing your tone and, and your approach to writing, right? And a creative writer might have in their everyday writing practice, they might like find little nuggets that they can pull out and use in their creative works, right? But an, a scholarly writer, an academic writer, the writing process is different. It's not for most scholars, like unless, I guess, like even if you're a philosopher, you're still relying on other philosophers, but like, it's not just coming from your head, right? It is coming from data. It is coming from tables and charts and analyses. And even if you're a qualitative writer, it's coming from excerpts, right? It's coming from something and it's incorporating sources. And these things are not moved forward simply by putting words on a page or simply by saying that you're going to write every day because sometimes what you need to do is build a table or you need to select an artifact or you need to read a source and incorporate it into a lit review. And I consider those things writing but the people who purport to be right every day for a certain amount of time or a certain number of words do not usually count all of those things as writing. So your writing practice has to be deeper than just, I'm going to do it every day. The other thing about the idea that writing every day is going to kind of solve your academic writing problems or somehow keep your pipeline flowing is that it's not resilient, 
right? So writing every day is built on the motivation of the streak. And so like, I always think about my husband and his Duolingo streak, right? Like that he is motivated by the fact that you don't want to break that streak. Again, like this is not the best motivator for most people about their academic writing. So breaking a streak or maintaining a streak is like not meaty enough to really call it like a writing practice. Your writing practice has to be about your relationship with writing. It has to be about this connection to your writing. It has to be about the connection to your scholarship. It has to be positive. So I feel like that streak idea, that commitment to the streak it has built into it almost like a penalty, right? It's not what you do, it's what you don't do, right? You don't break the streak. And so it's not focused enough on the real kinds of writing and the kinds of things you need to do in order to get your publications out as an academic. And it is too vulnerable to the feelings of guilt and overwhelm and failure. And like, we have enough of that in academia. Like we don't need to build that into our writing practice. That's not gonna be helpful to move our writing practice forward. The kinds of feelings we need to develop in our writing practice are feelings of positive reinforcement, right? Positive feedback loops. I have a writing session, it's good, it's juicy, it moves my project forward, and then I look forward to the next writing session. Instead of, you know, I have a writing session and what I need to do is have the next writing session and the next one and the next one because I can't break the streak. Like it's just not deep enough. It's not deep enough to motivate you. The other thing about focusing on writing every day is I actually don't think it's sustainable. It certainly was never sustainable for me as a mom of young kids. And I'm sure that for people who have chronic health difficulties, or are not neurotypical or any of the other things that might be going on with you and your precious brain. For many, many people, every day is just not a realistic commitment. For me, for example, I would maybe try to write every day and then a day would come along, my kid would be sick and I wouldn't get to the writing and then ugh, no, I have to start over again. You know, you want to avoid those feelings of guilt and overwhelm and frustration. Like, you don't want to build those into your writing practice. So that's why I say consistency, yes. You know, weekly, try. <laughs> but you actually have to build a writing practice that is resilient so that you don't have to be so darn resilient all the time. But your writing practice can be resilient. And what that means is that when something comes along, you know, like to follow the mom example, right? Like your kid gets sick and so you're home with the kid and you can't, you know, move your writing forward during a week or whatever, or you get sick or your parent, something happens or the pipe explodes in your house or all the many, many things that can happen to us as humans. We can put the writing down and understand how to pick it back up again, how we can turn up the volume on writing and turn it down like that. We are in control of the writing practice and the writing practice is built on a foundation that's deep enough that we don't just lose it once we break a streak, okay? So that's the first extreme writing practice is this idea of writing every day and that's why it doesn't work. Okay, the second writing practice that is extreme and that doesn't work is binge writing. So let me tell you what I mean by binge writing because so many of you are doing it and I understand, but I just want you to know that there's a different and better way. So binge writing is when you wait until a break in the semester or a quote unquote vacation time or Friday or the weekend in order to get your writing done. And you try to smush all of your writing into one day or two days or the three weeks over the holiday break or spring break or something like that. This is binge writing because it has the other side of the binge and bust cycle, which is the bust, okay? So here's all the reasons that the binge writing as a writing practice does not work. And listen, I tried for a long time, like it is very tempting 
to say, I'm not going to teach on Fridays. So that's going to be my writing day, right? And then all the other things that could possibly happen in your life happen on the Friday. And there goes your writing practice right out the window. That's one of the reasons why binge writing doesn't work. The other reason is the bust side. So if let's say you have maybe an almost done article and you're waiting, like you're like, I just need to put a few good hours into this article. I'm going to just put it aside. I'm going to run my semester. And then when I get to Christmas break, I am going to binge that article and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to churn it out. So here's a few reasons that that doesn't work. One of the reasons it doesn't work is because you're never honing your writing project management skills when you rely on binge writing. Okay. So you never have to like, break the project down into tasks. You never learn how long it takes you to actually do things. You never hone those project management skills because you are just like running, 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 go, 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 trying to get it done in the quote unquote off time that you have. So again, it's not a writing practice. It's a band-aid that's trying to get you to, you know, get some publications out so you can keep going. It's not a writing practice to do binge writing. The other reason is what I mentioned, right? Which is the bust. So you might binge, binge, binge and be like, oh, like work right up to a deadline for a grant or something or work up to a deadline for a special issue or just work in the time that you have and write, 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 write. And then you kind of collapse on the other side of it. So whenever you binge, there's a bust and those like, you know, extreme cycles are not going to help you to develop your writing practice. Okay. so. Why don't these things work? Why do people keep talking about them? They sound logical, right? Write every day. It sounds logical. You've heard it before. Creative writers have been doing it for years, so it should work for us as scholarly writers. Not really the case. Binge writing. You might not know that there's another way because that's the way you've been doing it for so long. Because once you got into the professorial job, the only time you had was on the weekends or on the holiday breaks. And so that's the only way you've been able to make it work so far. So that's what you're calling your writing practice and you're moving forward. But at some point, both of these extreme writing practices are going to break down for you. Instead, you need to develop what we call a sustainable relationship-based writing practice. And what relationship-based means is that the core of your writing practice is focused on creating a positive relationship between you and your writing. So relationship-based means that you have a positive relationship with your writing and you have a positive relationship with your writing practice, okay? If you want to learn how to do this, we teach it in our Navigate Your Writing Roadmap program and you can get on the wait list so that you can be one of the first to apply when we open applications for our next round of Navigate. So if this is something that sounds good to you, please get on the wait list for Navigate. And inside of that program is like all of my best teaching about how to create a writing practice that's sustainable so that we can forget these kind of like, you know, these, I guess, okay, trites of pieces of advice that don't work in the long term. They might work for some amount of time, but they're really not designed for you and they're really not designed to be sustainable. So I really hope that this video or podcast, if you're listening on the podcast, has been helpful for you. And please go ahead and sign up to the Navigate wait list if you're interested in creating a sustainable writing practice as a professor. All right, have a great day, bye. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time supporting yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you like what you heard today, the best way to say thank you is to hop on over to Apple iTunes and write an honest review. The more reviews, the more amazing academic women and non-binary people will find this podcast. So go write one now.